Uh. That beat though. Woo! Whoa. Oh. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh. So as you can see, I'm uh, gonna do a tutorial on driving a car uh, forward using a little parallax scrolling and a little bit of 3D and some particle magic. So um, this is just the way that I would do it. I don't know if this is the best way, but um, I thought I'd give it a try. So let's go. Okay, I just wanted to show you this first part really quick on how to make a background look like it's uh, scrolling forward. Um, and that's by using objects. And I use particles. You don't have to use particles, but this is a, if you're doing a lot of trees or something that you know there's going to be a lot of and you want to randomly generate them, this is one way to do it. So you can see I have a background. I have the ground here. And this is just a square that you can grab. I'm going to end up um, grabbing these points and moving them to make it look like the road's moving. Like this. And the first thing we're going to do is gonna we're going to import an image and we'll go ahead and use this tree. I'll go ahead and open that up. And the first thing we have to do is animate this one tree going into the background. Now instead of moving it, um, well we are going to move it, but I'm going to click on the transform layer tool and use click on Z. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so it's pretty big like that. And then I'm going to move it over to the side so it's off screen. And I'm going to click the uh, first keyframe and just click on it so it creates a keyframe right here. And then we'll go to frame 192. And you can put this wherever you want. This just uh, however fast you want it to go. Uh, if you want it to go faster, put it down by like 96 or something like that. So I'm going to click on Z with it on frame 192 and then just scroll the tree back. And we have the uh, horizon lined up right where it needs to be so um, we don't have to adjust anything there. So we'll just do that. I'll right click on the last keyframe and do cycle. And I always do to two. So the first frame and the last frame don't repeat one after the other. And I'm going to click on the first keyframe and do linear. So it's a constant speed. So if I hit play, now it looks like that tree is just going by the roadside. And it'll keep repeating itself. Just like that. So in order to make a bunch of trees, we'll use particles. So go to frame zero, go add particle, we'll just call this trees, and let me rename that so we know what it is, tree, and we'll drag that into the particle layer, and let me zoom out real quick, and click on particle and particle options, and we'll go ahead and do not a whole lot. We'll do like eight trees, eight particles, eight uh, for the preview, and then lifetime needs to be 192 because that's how long we made the animation. Like that. Then we'll just zero everything out. And you can see right there, if I hit play, there's trees that are just um, Oops, going by the uh, side of the road. But we want them to be a little bit more spread out. So go back to frame zero, click on particle options. I'm gonna evenly space these so they're, uh, let me hit, so they just continually, they look like one continual row. That's good for like, if you're doing street lights or something uniform. But for trees, we want them to be a little bit more random. So we'll click on the particle options. Play that, and then change the source width a little bit. Oops. Source width, and then we'll just spread them out just a little bit. Now they're kind of spread out, but they're going over across the road, and we don't want that. 
Let me just turn that down a little bit to about 4.25-ish. So I'm gonna click on the canvas and hit spacebar to stop it. Now the way to get these off the road, just go to frame zero and see this line right here? That's actually where your particles are being generated from. So we need to click on the particle layer and click transform layer and just pull this over to the side. And make sure this line isn't intersecting with the uh, road at the very end right there. <clears throat> so if it's right there, none of the trees should be on the road. They'll just pop up and... So we have this um, animating like that. We will go ahead and duplicate it. And then we're going to select the uh, transform layer tool. Then we'll just hit flip like that. So that should make them all on the right side and then drag them over to right there. Yes, that works. So I just had to flip the particle layer itself because the particle layer um, is kind of random. But you see now they're doing the exact same thing. They're being mirrored on both sides. So to fix that, we'll go to frame zero, click on the sequencer, and then just grab the tree two particle layer and just drag it a little bit. And it's that'll just offset it so they're not animating the same on both sides. So now it looks a little bit more uh, random. Okay, so now to add to the illusion, We'll go ahead and import an image and we will go to, I'm just gonna use a, a picture of my car just so it's easier to render and work with. And I'll go ahead and shrink it. Actually, I'm gonna make it this big just so it fits to where I was talking in the video. <clears throat> now the cool thing, let me turn the car off for just a second. The really nice thing about using 3D layers and particles is if I grab the camera and move it, you'll notice that the trees uh, move in 3D space, which is really good. Um, but I've locked everything else. The, the sky, background, foreground, and the ground itself are all immune to camera movements. That's why they're not moving. If I took them off, if I took off that and applied the ground, if I grab a camera now, it'll move also. And I don't want that. So I'm gonna lock it right here with immune camera movements, to camera movements, just so the trees are the only thing that move when I uh, move a camera like that. So what I can do is I'll go to frame one, make a keyframe. I'll go to frame 96, I'll move the trees over which is actually the camera. And then let's say 216, I will move them back this way. Now to create the illusion that the uh, road is moving as well, we'll go to uh, frame one. I'm just gonna click on the road so it creates a keyframe. Go to frame 96. I'm gonna hit G, and I'm gonna grab these points here. Let's see, where's that move to? All right, it's all over the place. Did I? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe I should have done that at the same time. Hold on. Let's go. Frame 96, I move the camera over like that. Okay, I'm moving the camera over. Now I'm gonna grab the ground, move that over, and then move the, uh, down like that. I think that looks, yeah, that's what I wanted. And then I'll go to frame 192. Grab the camera, move it this way. And grab the ground. Oops. Now I want to grab this. This is kind of a way to cheat. 
um, to have it look like you're using 3D space when you're not, for the, the road at least, anyway. So then I'll just do that, and let's see how that looks like. So now it looks like the road, or the camera's kind of turning this way. Oops, <laughs> that tree was in the road a little bit, but that's okay. But that's getting fancy. You can just have it, you know, facing forward, then you won't have to worry about the movement. But, just adds to the 3D effect, I should say. So the last thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to import the picture of the car. Oh, I already did. Sorry. I'm spacing out here. So there's the car. You'll notice that it moves. This actually, because the car is not set to immune camera, it's in the correct place. So we actually can use it as a guide for the road. So I know the center of the road back there is pretty much right. I can grab it and move it over. Oops. Grab it and move it a little more. But then I know for sure that this is supposed to be centered. Now, if this was a real car, you'd see the sides and it'd be turned a little bit, but I didn't make it 3D and that's going to take too much time. So <laughs> I'll do that some other time. So that's right, and then it moves back this way. So that should be centered there. Like that. So then now it looks like the car is moving. Again, it doesn't look great because the angle is too extreme. So the car, you'd actually see the side of your car. But it's just to show you guys how to, to, to uh, do that. And to add just a little bit more realism, we'll go to the car and click on it, just on frame one. And just that little bit of movement, I'll just uh, set it to noisy. And I'm going to change this to 0 0.005. And I'll turn the scale up so it's kind of bopping around a little bit. And let's, So then the car looks like it's kind of off screen. Bouncing a little bit, you see that there? And that's how I made that effect on the cartoon at the beginning. So that's the basic uh, setup for uh, doing a repeating background or making it look like movement. You could also do speed lines, um, make these background elements uh, set to the background so there's parallax scrolling and um, I'll have to do that on another video. This one's getting kind of long and it's a little bit more complicated and this is kind of the easier way to do it. So if you have any questions or comments, just leave them down below or um, just go ahead and leave me a message on Facebook, on the Anime Studio Pro Facebook uh, page and uh, that's it. Thanks, bye.